we are live. This is Jenny Walker, and welcome to Jenny Girl's Closet. Where did that come from? Welcome to Jenny Girl's Closet. As you can hear, we have um, some activity outside the window. Somebody is cleaning up, and I can hear it, so I don't know what to tell you. So anyway, welcome to my YouTube channel. Uh, where we talk all about styling, reselling, and consignment. I am a full-time uh, consignment store co-owner and reseller and stylist. I pretty much 24-7 all in this area, which I love so much. And today I just wanted to come on and do a quick mini haul of some things I found yesterday. Did a quick stop in and out of the closet here in Pasadena, which is one of my favorite places to source. And... Uh, it's, it's very few things, <laughs> but I'll try to stretch it a little bit. Um, but yeah, so went to out of the closet and, uh, you know, the pink bag that they're so famous for. Um, you know, if you don't, if you don't have one in your area or if you do and you haven't been, I mean, it really is something to, um, to check out. And I find that, um, you know, they get trucks sent to them from, I guess, a like a hub or something like that, but they also get local donations. And so, um, you know, you just never know what you're going to find in there and everybody's looking for something different. And over time I've gotten to know many of the people at out of the closet, not just the staff, but, um, some of the other resellers that, that are in there. And so over time you just start chatting. And, uh, so yeah, so just going to show you a little bit about, about what I have and, uh, behind me, it's another piece of vintage Moschino while we're waiting on people to get into the chat. This sweater um, is from one of the collections that Jeremy Scott did for, Mos for Moschino. I think it was his first collection with the, um, the inverted M for McDonald's. And you know, it makes you wonder how much of a licensing fee they had to pay in order to use the logo. But he did the logo and used it on. <clears throat> it's kind of funny because <clears throat> Moschino is all about humor. And um, if we go back to the original designer, uh, it's very ironic and things like that. So it is ironic for a bunch of really thin models to go down a runway wearing Moschino uh, with McDonald's uh, colors and logos and things like that. So, so yeah, <clears throat> that's a little something from, <clears throat> excuse me about that. That's part of my vintage Moschino collection. So I really like the old stuff, the super old stuff, but, um, you know, the stuff that Jeremy Scott is doing will eventually be vintage as well. So, uh, these days vintage, it doesn't have the traditional meaning. It's pretty much whatever's not the current season. So this is a few seasons back when he first started and it's a lot of fun. I'm happy to have it. So also have the matching handbag. I should show it to you, but I'm not gonna, I'll do that another time. So anyway, let me get started into what I have. It's a very small group of items, but we're showing. Uh, I talk a lot about dressing for my girl and what my girl likes to wear. A lot of blah, blah a lot of black, <laughs> and a lot of blah. Um, a lot of black, and um, I have tons of black. I love vests. Um, but anyway, so this is a just a, your classic black wool gabardine vest with the three buttons. We all have seen this. Well, it's got four buttons. No, wait, one, two, three, four, five, five buttons. Um, you know, with that in the back, like the satin back. And this is by Theory and um, a little size two. And um, this cost me um, $5 less. Um, that was a 10% off everything I bought. So $4.50, count me in for a Theory black wool vest. And it's in perfect um, pristine condition. And it's got, you know, all its parts and the thing to adjust it in the back. So when I think of something like this, you know, I envision wearing it with, um, you know, skinny black wool gabardine pants, um, maybe some, again, I always default to the East Coast dressing because I am in denial that I live in California. Um, uh, so boots like ankle boots, knee high boots skinny black pants, this vest, and then like a long sleeve blouse. It could be a pattern. It could be solid white. It could be uh, black, could be a turtleneck. And that pretty much um, would be like a uniform. And for a lot of people who need uniforms, and I find that a lot, um, 
because I because they've told me, not because I asked, but a lot of people who buy all this black that I have, if it's a classic coat or a vest or pants, it's because they need a uniform. Perhaps they're a waitress or they have something where they all have to wear black. Um, it could be in the service industry or people just buying classic pieces for work. So, yeah. What will I be pricing this? You know, probably like $125. I'll price it because that's how I roll. I don't price things like twenty dollars that's not what i do <laughs> it's not what i do here um so anyway now the next piece i'm so excited about and i talked about this brand just yesterday um and um sarah who was with me yesterday who works with me um part-time she uh found these when we were going around out of the closet i didn't see them yet so she found them before i did but this is um gautier jean paul gautier and i'll show you the tag this is um What's it says John by here it is. Can you see? Can you see it? Can you see it? Jean Paul Gautier. If you don't know this brand, you can always Google it and get images because my lighting here is atrocious. Um, these are some amazing, amazing black wool pants um, that are high waisted pleated. And um, they have this signature tab in the back, and all of his clothes have this little tab in the back. And if you find something that doesn't have it, um, probably shouldn't buy it because this is, every, I mean, every single piece, whether it's a gown, a dress, a pants, a shirt, it has this little um, tab in the back. That's his signature. Uh, but Gauthier does not make ready to wear anymore. He has moved on to couture only, and his pieces are highly sought after. Not every piece is amazing, like with most designers. And also, the stores don't buy every piece that's amazing. They have to buy things that are wearable. Um, and so these are super cool because they're high waisted. They're wool gabardine, and um, and they have this extra little cool tab right here. And um, so you can wear a belt with these. They got those cool pockets in the back, and um, they're just really, really awesome wide pants. That so they're uh, not ultra wide, but wide pants with the high waist. You can wear a belt cool little details and these were um nine dollars and uh ten percent off so eight dollars and ten cents which is a great price i mean these will get priced like 250 dollars something like that and if you don't know the brand you don't know somebody's willing to pay you a couple hundred dollars for these and remember i sell on ebay as well as poshmark and we use the global shipping program so a lot of the gautier goes overseas and so you have to understand different brands play differently in different countries. And so perhaps it's not something that you think um, there's an audience for in your own community or even the United States. Well, put it on eBay in the global shipping program and let people self select for themselves what they love about your inventory. And um, they can just have it shipped straight to them. Um, this last piece, I only bought it because it was there. <laughs> And because every piece by this brand I've ever found, I've sold. Uh, this is not a brand that I buy personally. This is not a brand I know too much about. I just know each piece is kind of interesting and each piece I've sold. It's called Boston Proper. And um, I think you find this online. So this is a cool wool boucle jacket. It was $7 and 10% off. So $6 and 30 cents. And um, it's really cute ruffle detail everywhere and in the back um same ruffle kind of a a boucle feel to it <clears throat> and uh it's actually rayon wool poly blend size four and it's again it's it's my girl it's what she would wear um you know again i'm trying to get brands and styles in a wide variety i can't talk a wide variety of price points right so i'll have the 200 $25, $250 go to pants, but then I'll have another pair of like by Barney, Barney's New York that might be $95 and another pair by Jones New York that could be say $30. So the idea is to get the same outfit in different price points by different brands to appeal to a larger audience. Um, Boston proper. I'm not looking for that brand. Um, I just know that it has sold for me each time and it does again, it will, coordinate with everything else that I have that I'm selling and that's in my closet. So that's why I picked that up. And that's all I got, three little things. So I put back a lot of stuff. 
and I'm really, I have a ton of inventory <laughs> to go through and I'm trying not to add to it uh, without it being, you know, a really good piece. So all three of those are good pieces. The only thing that I don't think that if I had to put back something, I would put back the jacket I just showed you. Um, and I would keep the other two simply because it's a lesser brand and um, say it's not hundred percent wool, for example, it's a blend. And you know, anytime something's not hundred percent wool, it's usually a lesser, usually a lesser brand. It's lesser quality. It's usually lined in acetate and things like that. Uh, but when you've got, you're dealing with hundred percent wool, um, you know, they've, they've paid extra for the fabric. Right. And so, and I know that even things, there we go again with the hair, even jackets that I've owned over the years, I'll never forget this one coat I owned by the brand Mundi, M-O-N-D-I. I think they're defunct now, but back in the eighties and nineties, you could find them in the mall. And, um, I was living in Atlanta. And so they had a store in the Atlanta mall. And I remember buying this wool coat. It was the most beautiful thing I'd ever seen at the time. And it was wool blend. And I knew enough about wool that it's guaranteed to pill if it's a blend. Guaranteed to pill. Like just go on and line up and get ready to get your shaver out. And I didn't want another pilly wool blend anything. And it was just so beautiful. And they said, they just promised that it wasn't going to pill. It was a high quality wool blend. <laughs> sure enough, it pilled. Uh, but it was beautiful up until the time it pilled. And I eventually got rid of it in a consignment shop. But, you know, it just goes to show that even the best looking wool blend is guaranteed to pill. So so don't buy it. Um, get 100% wool. It's going to last a lot longer. It's going to have a better resale potential because it's not going to have the frictions, not going to have worn out the fabric as easily as if it's 100, you know, as it would if it's a wool blend. And so no one is in the chat. This is unusual. Usually somebody's popped in there and said hello, and I've got something to respond to, but I don't know. Maybe everybody's a little shy today. Easter made, made them Easter shy. I don't know. Um, but anyway, so that's a little bit about that. So why don't I talk a little bit more about luxury brands? And I will do some videos that specifically focus on luxury and how to identify it. Um, how to think about it, uh, think about it differently when you do find it. And I think one of the things that fascinates me the most is, um, oh, Nike Boxes is there. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, one of the things that fascinates me about resellers who find luxury goods who don't specialize in it, it's what they call a unicorn, you know, or... <laughs> so, no, a unicorn? That's not what I call luxury. But anyway... Um, they find something and they don't know what it is. They just know it's luxury or pseudo luxury or could be luxury. And they just don't know. They don't know enough about it to know how to dispose of it in the best way. And by the best way, I mean, how do you leverage what you have to get the most amount for it, not just to move it. And, um, because the numbers you're thinking and talking about in luxury are so much higher than your average uh, flip of a pair of Gap uh, pants, um, it can be unusual for people or uncomfortable or they just don't understand why someone would be willing to pay that. But I can guarantee you there's plenty of people out there with who's got um, there's no shortage of resources to buy interesting things. And so. Uh, since we've got these platforms out there to present what we have to the world, then let the world self-select what they want to buy from you at what price point. And so and you don't need to uh, sell yourself short because you don't know enough about an item. So the next time you get something Gautier um, or find it, my, my suggestion would be to go research who this person is. And I'm not talking about doing comps. I'm saying, who is this designer, this award-winning uh, I think uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier may have even been knighted or gotten that honor from the queen in England. Um, he only does couture now, which means it's out of reach for any uh, average person. And so to find his amazing pieces in the secondary market is going to be thrilling for people who know that brand and are looking for it. He's the one who was famous for the Madonna cone bra uh, earlier in her career. He's dressed her many times and um, celebrities, you know, he, he, you know, these designers go in and out of favor as in um, they'll be hot 
he didn't go anywhere, but like maybe the media is focusing on a different designer for a while. Maybe they're focusing on Jeremy Scott or they're focusing on a Tom Ford or something like that, but he didn't go anywhere. <laughs> He's just doing other things. And um, a lot of these designers are busy doing things that we don't hear about in, in the media just because all media doesn't pick up all things. And so uh, research him, figure out who he is, what makes him special, and ask yourself not why does it cost so much, but why is it worth so much? Why is someone willing to spend $250 on a pair of wool gabardine pants that I paid $6 for it out of the closet? Um, and so when you can ask yourself that question and answer it, well, you won't you won't sell those pants for $40 because if you do have them for $40, I'll come buy them from you. I'm going to sell them for 250. So um, that's kind of how I think about things is, is always trying to figure out retail triage, where to dispose of what for the most amount. And I'm not thinking where to dispose of it for the amount, the most amount and have speed involved. Okay. Cause um, what I'm talking about, you have to take the speed factor out. Okay. And, um, if you're only interested in speed, then uh, that's a different different strategy. But um, if you've got a minute and can buy some, have when you find some really cool inventory like that, say, okay, this is I don't normally get this anyway, um, so I'm going to set it aside and figure out what's a really unique outlet for this piece. And you know, I um I've said in a different video I saw someone who was very excited to have found a Max Mara wool coat at, at the bins. And they were like, we don't know. We're going to price it. And I'm like, well, I sold that coat for a thousand dollars in my store used because new they're four and $5,000. And for the person who acquires it, who doesn't know the original retail price, looking at comps is really a really kind of um, odd way to go about determining the value of luxury. Because in my mind, luxury takes longer to sell when you're trying to get the maximum out of it. And it's very quick to sell when you're when you don't care about maximizing the dollars in it. It'll move really quickly because it's undervalued. And that's the model of places like the real real, um, you know, where they underprice all of their luxury so that it moves super, super fast. They move most of their inventory within 30 days. And a lot of it moves the, the minute it hits the site because it's so underpriced that people looking for Gautier or looking for Tom Ford or looking for Gucci or Dior, they're stocking that site like a supreme drop looking for the things. So the minute that they come up, they buy them and they're gone. So the frenzy that you find in a Supreme drop is the same frenzy that takes place in the luxury segment for people that are looking for this stuff. And, you know, the drops that they do on these sites where I'm looking for vintage Moschino, you know, you have to be right then. Just because I'm on that site when it drops doesn't mean I get it. I mean, there's so many times I'm just crying <laughs> going, oh my gosh, they got it before me. And I was right there refreshing and refreshing, you know, and that just goes to show that I'm not the only one who's looking. And if I go and I look at other brands, you can tell that people are sitting there stalking the drops on this site for different brands, whether it's Chanel or Louis Vuitton or, you know, Tom Ford or whatever it is that they're looking for. They, they are people that they know are on that site, refreshing, waiting for that drop so they can find it. That's how eager, eager people are for luxury and not just luxury that's undervalued or underpriced or, or, um, cause there's, a, there are many things on this real, real site that are not undervalued or underpriced. They are adequately priced for what they are and still sell immediately, if not sooner. Right. Um, so people's appetite for something different, appetite for luxury is global. It is worldwide. There's lots of reasons people want luxury. It isn't just to wear for themselves. And as soon as you can get that out of your head, that somebody's buying it to wear, you will think about it a lot differently. Um, as a matter of fact, assume they're not buying it to wear. Assume that they're buying it uh, to collect or to, um, to flip or, uh, you know, for some other reason. Or maybe it's a, a styling project, could be a movie, it could be 
you know, there's some museum exhibit coming up that you don't know anything about. And so in dealing with luxury and all luxury is not created equal, everything by a Jean-Paul Gaultier is not worthy of um, excitement. You know, a lot of the classic and basics that they put out that kind of go with the more interesting pieces. You know, it's what stores have to buy when they would buy coordinate groups to kind of balance it out. So if you're going to have a, you want people to buy the whole coordinate group by a designer. So you want them to buy the pants and the blouse and the jacket. And you want everything that goes together. And so the pants tend to be in the skirts, the least interesting pieces by the designers and the jackets and the coats the blouses, the accessories tend to be the things that are more visually exciting. And that's how that is. So, uh, so yeah, <laughs> my little ramble for the day. Um, so that's kind of where I am with all that. Uh, I plan to do some other videos where I specifically focus on, again, the luxury segment. I can take maybe a designer at a time. We could start with Gautier, move on to Moschino, move on to, say, Christian Dior. Um, and kind of ask ourselves, or rather I will not ask ourselves, I will ask myself for your benefit. Why is it worth so much? What is it about the designer? and What should you be looking for when you're trying to resell it, when you come across it? And the worst thing you can do is put it up for auction. I have noticed, um, it is the way to get the least amount for what you have on eBay. Um, and uh, I think a uh, fixed price on eBay is a fantastic way. I love eBay because of the global nature of the platform when you're dealing with luxury, rather than limit yourself to say only the United States on a platform like a Poshmark. There's plenty of other platforms out there that are global like Etsy and Vistari Collective and things like that. Um, but eBay for me, because that's the one I have the most experience on, is the one that I like to talk about and can share my experience with. And that is it. I have to go here in a minute because I am opening up my store and um, I have to uh, stop by the uh, local Ralph so I can pick up my lunch because um, it's hard to get out once I get in there. And that's it. So I hope you've enjoyed this little mini haul video with a little uh, section on designer. And I hope to get into more of that later in future videos. I do appreciate your support very much. And if you like anything that you heard, the way you can let me know that is a thumbs up. Um, please like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon if you want to know when I go live, which could be at any time. Surprise, here I am. <laughs> and uh, being on the West Coast, it's hard to go live at night because y'all are on the other, low, you know, y'all like in bed and stuff. So I got to I gotta start earlier. And that's it. Um, enjoy your day. I look, appreciate your support of my channel. And I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And Nike Boxes, thanks for being there and letting me know. I really appreciate it and look forward to chatting with you in another video. Goodbye.